What is up YouTube? My name is Alex Lugo and today I'm going to tell you all about OCaml. OCaml is a really cool language that mixes functional, imperative, and object-oriented paradigms. Functional programming itself is based on lambda calculus, whereas other paradigms like procedural are based on Turing machines. Both of these two concepts are different models that help describe computation in general. Lambda calculus is a bit more mathematical, and Turing machines end up being more of an abstract computer. Well, a computer from like the 1950s. But we're not talking about Turing machines today, we're going to be talking about OCaml. Being based on functional programming, OCaml mostly uses functions above all else. You probably all guessed that by the name functional programming. Other paradigms might use objects, which are collections of data, or procedures, which are essentially just to-do lists for a program to run through. But functional programming really likes those simple algebraic math type functions that you probably encountered in high school. And recursion. Functional programming uses a lot of recursion. Naturally, I really like OCaml because its paradigm is more so out of the norm. And I really like those crazy, out there different ways to express computation. And because of this, I think OCaml is definitely one of the coolest programming languages that I've ever worked in. It has a package manager called OPAM and a build system called Dune. Not to be confused with the sci-fi books or anything. So now that you know a little bit about OCaml, what is it usually used for? Well, OCaml can be either interpreted or compiled. And whichever one you want to use usually changes the way it's used a bit. Granted, I'm not going to go too much into that here. OCaml is oftentimes used for web servers. Whether this be like a, your regular traditional HTTP web server sending out JSON packets or a website, or it might even be the newer serverless type stuff with like Lambda as a service, pay per computation, really cool next level web stuff like that. I've sort of been wanting to get into this and I think when I do, I'll definitely use OCaml, Elixir, and some other crazy functional languages for it. OCaml is also used extensively in parser design. Let's say you want to make your own programming language. You have to write a program that can go through your code, make it easier for machines to understand, and then go through all the pieces and run it as code. That's what a compiler does. But how do you build a compiler? Well, it turns out recursion lends itself really good to compilers. And if you remember from about three minutes ago, OCaml loves recursion. And so naturally, a lot of compilers are built in OCaml, or people usually use OCaml when they're building compilers. Fun fact, even Facebook likes to use OCaml for the compilers. Their internal scripting language is compiled via a OCaml program. So if you want to get into Facebook, try learning OCaml. It might just get you that interview. Okay, you know what OCaml is, you know why people use it, how do you use it? Well, to get started, go to OCaml.org and install the language. You can't code an OCaml if you don't have it on your machine. Next, like most program languages, you can either open up a file and start writing it out, or you can use the interactive terminal. If you're gonna go the file route like I normally do, go ahead and open up a text editor or ID. My favorite is Atom because it's super customizable and you can use it for like anything. And if you wanna go the interactive terminal route, definitely skip over the built-in OCaml terminal. Go for the UTOP shell because the built-in OCaml shell is just garbage. Like don't, <laughs> don't, ever use the built-in OCaml shell. Always go with UTOP. UTOP is definitely OCaml programmer's best friend, apart from OPAM and Dune. Oh, and the Pervasives library. That's also pretty useful. Okay, so just to make sure you guys have a pretty good understanding of how to use OCaml, I'm actually gonna show you me writing a project in the language. Okay, I am going to write a simple program in OCaml. So I just want to write one function in OCaml, and it's going to help us determine if a number is an exponent of 2. 
So for any of you guys who have probably studied a bit of computer science, you know we store everything in binary. And you find that the number of stuff you can store within binary is always a some power of two. You know, for old Super Mario Bros, it was like 8-bit processors. And then Super Mario World was like 16-bit. And then some computers today are either 32 or 64-bit. So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, first things first, I'm going to write this function in OCaml because it's a functional language. And as you see me go ahead and type it, I'm going to have an all-in-one line. But it's still going to do some pretty, not quite complex stuff, but it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be a recursive function, and it's going to tell us if a number is some exponent of 2 or not. So I'll just call it is exp. I didn't mean to put that space there. We'll give it input x. Actually, let's save it real quick so way Adam knows we are in OCaml. There we go. So what's our base algorithm here? We have some number x, and we want to keep dividing it by 2. If eventually we get a 1, that means that it was some power of 2 all along. If we get some number less than 1, that means it wasn't a power of 2. So we're going to say if x equals 1.0. It's important that we use 1.0 because OCaml has very strong type stratification. So if we had just a 1 like this, OCaml will think we're dealing with integers. And so when we divide it by, if we get like a three and we try dividing it by a two and then the two again, you're not gonna get 1.5 or whatever. It's gonna round to like one or two. And then our program isn't gonna, then our logic isn't gonna work as well. So you really have to be careful about types in OCaml. So what I'm saying here is if eventually we get x equals one, that means it's divisible by two. So we just return true. And because functions in OCaml follow that like old high school algebra type stuff, we don't have to say return, we just assign some value and it automatically becomes the value of the function once it's called. So we're gonna say if x equals one, then true, else if x is less than 1.0, false. And otherwise, we're gonna run the function again, but with x divided by two. And you notice here I've got divided by dot. And again, that's because of types in OCaml. If you're dividing by a float or double, I think it's called float in OCaml, um, you need to have that dot after your addition or mathematic operator. It's just some weird quirk of the language. So now we got this, I'm gonna go ahead and compile it real quick. So use the OCaml command. I think we call this is exp.ml. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. Let's see. So we have an error on line one, characters 57 through 61. I forgot the then. That's also important. There we go. It compiles. But you see, it doesn't actually do anything. So let's go ahead and run our function. Let's see if four is some exponent of two. Still doesn't do anything. And that's because it's not printing anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the printf module in OCaml. And let's see if I remember how to do this. Yeah, so in OCaml, because it's functional, you might be reminded of Lisp, if you ever heard that language. Although I doubt it, because I think more people know OCaml today than they do Lisp. I don't know why I said that. But anyway, you put the, you can put the uh, parentheses outside the function and parameters. I think it's kind of nice that way. So we're gonna say, you're gonna do some string interpolation. So it says print out a Boolean in a new line, and we're gonna print out whatever gets returned by this guy right here. So let's go ahead and run that. True, that's good. It works in at least that case. So we're saying that four is an exponent of two, and it is. So let's go ahead and try writing this with 15. 64, and we're gonna go ahead and run this with 1007. And let's run. Okay, true, false, true, false. Let's see, that's right. Uh, let's see, true, false, true, false. Okay, so our OCaml program works perfectly. That's pretty cool. Okay, hopefully that demonstration was helpful to all of you. Now, where can you go to learn more about OCaml? There's a number of websites you can go to, and I'll have links to every single one of them in the description. There is a website for the language itself, OCaml, 
There's a website for the package manager, OPAM, and there's a website for the build system manager, Dune. Again, no relation to the books. Speaking of which, there actually are a number of programming books you can get for OCaml. I know O'Reilly has a pretty good programming book that's mostly where I learned OCaml apart from university. And yes, it has a picture of a camel on it. That is one opportunity not missed. And that's all I've got on OCaml today. Hopefully this video was helpful. Go ahead and like, comment, or subscribe. You can click the little bell below to get notified. You can follow me on the social medias listed down below. There is a lot of stuff you can do to help out my channel. If you want to hear my explanations on other languages, go ahead and click here and here. Either or, it doesn't really matter. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.